so yeah, I, I want to talk about Serum today, and I guess I want to start from from what where why Serum is instead of what it is. Um, and I uh, and maybe let's just start with what DeFi is. Um, you know, what is DeFi and why is DeFi? Um, you know, decentralized finance is this thought that you know, sure, one thing you can do with crypto is you can buy and sell tokens, um, but if you look at a blockchain, it's not just a way to move tokens around. Um, a blockchain, really at its heart, is a full decentralized computer. And I think this is like one of the things that Ethereum really showed. Um, and it's it's really Ethereum's hallmark. And, and it sort of changed the industry forever. Um, that people realized that, um, you know, you can do anything on a blockchain. It's, you know, they're basically Turing complete. Um, so you can program whatever programs you want into a blockchain. And, and that sort of led to the realization that, well, wait, could you program a cryptocurrency exchange into a blockchain itself? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, you know, you can sort of write out all the code for, you know, swapping assets with each other. And, and you can write it directly into the blockchain. And that's what, what, that's what DEX is, a decentralized exchange. And the really cool thing about it um, well, there are a lot of really cool things about it. One is that uh, you you kind of have to be honest if you're doing it. Um, all the you know you, you make public the code and it's immutable. It's just sitting there on the blockchain. Anyone can look at it, um, and then anyone can interface with it. And you take yourself out of the equation. There's no person running the exchange. It runs itself, or you know the blockchain runs it. Um, so that's really cool. But an, another really cool thing is that anyone can use it and anyone can build on it. So if Adam comes and builds uh, a decentralized exchange into some blockchain, and then Bob comes and Bob wants to build some you know, retail facing application and they wanna have the ability to trade assets in it. You know, Usually when you start up a, a new application that has to have trading in it, it's a huge hassle. Like you have to figure out how how to build an exchange that's sort of step one uh and 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 that that sort of like makes it really hard to to build new cool types of companies if you have to start out by building the old ones but in DeFi, you can just compose with the existing dexes you can just plop adam's deck straight into your product um as if it's just natively is built for it put whatever gui you want on top of that and you're done and so you can take any existing decentralized products um, and put them into your product. And that's super awesome because it means that you can start building things by piecing these together. I think one of my favorite examples is borrow lending plus a DEX. So if you have a borrow lending protocol like Aave or Compound, you have a DEX like Uniswap or SushiSwap, um, you can just click those together and create a margin trading exchange where all in one transaction, you like send assets to the borrow lending protocol, you borrow something, you, you send it back to the DEX, you, you purchase with it, and now you've done a margin trade. Um, and you can't do that in centralized finance. Like if you try and piece two different exchanges together, one of which for borrow lending and one for the actual exchange, it's gonna be a massive pain and it's not gonna feel like it's one product. It's gonna feel really disjointed. So, so that, that's sort of like a, a second really powerful thing about DeFi. Um, and I think that's key, this, this composability, this sense that projects can build on top of each other. Because without it, everyone is building their own little mini island, their own little mini decentralized application. And you're sort of back where you started, with like everyone, you know, trying to run their own company. Um, instead of building this giant, exponentially growing ecosystem of applications that people can piece together. Um, and, and I think that's where a lot of the power of DeFi is, or a lot of the power of the potential of DeFi. Um, but you run into now one of the big constraints, um, which is that if this is your goal, um, you know, you've got uh, however many applications exist in, in this sort of hypothetical DeFi ecosystem, um, all combined together, you know, all maybe composing with each other. And, you know, they all have computational needs. They all have throughput. They all need transactions. Um, and how many do, do they need? Well, I think it's actually a really important question to ask. I think it has really, really big implications. And you can actually sort of address it. Um, and you know, really what it gets down to is how big are you hoping it gets? How big are you hoping this decentralized ecosystem gets? If your goal is to have like 
something which is the size of Uniswap today in usage, then, you know, you need two transactions a second or something. Uh, I, I think it's like roughly what Uniswap uses. Um, now, it's super expensive. You're, you're spending $100 sometimes on the transactions, but um, but sure, that's a service, you know, like uh, five users uh, at once, or, you know, something like 20,000 a day, you know, maybe 100,000 to a 500,000 total ever. Um, but, you know, really the goal is all more than that. What if you want to build something massive? What if you have a vision for, for, for crypto and for DeFi, which is bigger than just one protocol right now? What if you imagine a world where 100 million or a billion people are using DeFi, right? A world where it's gone mainstream and where it's powering everyday applications. Um, what does it take then? And I don't know, you can just look at these things, right? You can look at NYSE or NASDAQ, you can look at Facebook or Twitter, you look at Visa. Um, and they all sort of, you know, tend to take something between 10,000 and a million transactions a second. That's sort of the ballpark of what these sort of global scale applications really require. And I mean, that sort of makes sense. You know, if you have 100 million users um, and they're, uh, you know, each taking a few actions a day, you can just sort of figure out how many actions a second it's going to be. Um, and so I think that if you want DeFi to get huge, you need to have something like a million transactions a second. Um, and anything less than that is just going to be, you know, that your, 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 your goal is going to be that much smaller. Um, so, OK, so 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 far it's been pretty high level. And, and just sort of sketching out the, some, some of those sort of constraints on it. What does this mean? Well, it means that you have to make a choice also about whether it's all going on one blockchain or whether it's going on a lot of different shards or blockchains or, or non-composable elements. And you could do it such that you just run like a million blockchains in parallel, each with 10 transactions a second. The problem is that they're not really interacting with each other. You lose composability, applications can't build on each other, and no single application can be any more than 10 transactions a second. Um, you know, Twitter alone is like hundreds of thousands. So like, you know, say goodbye to anything that scale. Um, so really you want this all composable. You want this all in one shard. Um, and you want like a million TPS. And, you know, if you get 10,000 TPS instead, then it can only get 1% as big. You know, you're sort of like winning case that the like best that this can do is like 1 million users instead of 100 million users which is sort of sad. Um, uh, it, it, it's really sad because you're sort of giving up on crypto becoming huge. You're giving up on it going mainstream and you're giving up on it powering everyday applications. And you're just saying, yeah, it's, it's all we can serve a niche thing, which is really not, not the goal. Um, okay, so, uh, so now let's see where we are. So Ethereum has 10 transactions a second and that's just the end of the story. Um, that is a factor of 100,000 too low and that's why you can get 10,000 users and no more on it. You, you just can't have more. Uh, there, there are no transactions for them. And that's never going to change. Uh, so you can give up on that. Um, but, you know, there are more things in the Ethereum ecosystem. And there's Ethereum 2.0, which will come out at some point. And that's probably going to get, you know, a few thousand TPS per shard and then multiple shards. So you can get a lot if you put it all together. Um, but no single application can be bigger than like a thousand TPS. And applications that different shards can't compose with each other. Um, depends what your vision is for DeFi, you know, at a thousand TPS, you know, you're going to be something like a factor of, you know, a hundred to a thousand smaller than the grand vision. You know, you're going to be looking at, you know, at, at a million users max. Um, and, uh, you know, you're not going to be anywhere near one of the largest applications in the world, or at least no single application on it can be anywhere near one of the largest in the world. I think that's losing a lot of the upside of DeFi. I think it's sort of settling for, for something not so great. Um, you can look at rollups, you get sort of similar stories. Um, and and so I think if you want to have a million people in DeFi and you really want to have it in a, in a really powerful way and composable way, uh, you, you just need to find a blockchain with a million TPS. It's just how it is. Um, and there's sort of not much, I don't know, it's, I, don't, I don't think there's any way around that. Um, you're just giving up on the upside if you don't do it. And and nothing will ever recover for that. Like nothing can really compensate for it. Um so so okay. Um so now you're looking at blockchains with a million TPS and, and what are they? There are none. No blockchains have a million TPS right now, no public blockchains do. No decentralized ones. Um 
But okay, what's the biggest you can get in one of the roadmaps? And that's where we get to Solana. Solana is at about 50,000 TPS right now, which is enough to host like any one application in the world, sort of, or a bunch of big but not huge applications. Um, but it's also still growing pretty quickly in, in TPS, um, and it's going to get to a million or so in the next couple of years. So it's sort of on the on track, on the roadmap to get to where it needs to get, although it'll take a lot of clever engineering work to get there. There are a few other blockchains that, that are sort of like trying. Most aren't. Most blockchains aren't even trying to get anywhere near a million TPS ever. And so you just like think that, you know, they can never have sort of the base version of it. Um, so, um, so, okay. That's sort of where Solana comes into this story. Um, and that's why... Uh, you know, that, that's sort of why uh, Serum started building out on Solana, because it, it was one of the only blockchains which even has the ambition to get as big as it would need to get uh, in order to host world-scale applications. Um, and so, okay, what is Serum then? Serum is basically um, an attempt to build out the framework, to build out the fundamental primitives and tools that could power an ecosystem of a billion people on chain. Um, and what that means is basically thinking, all right, if you're going to try and build some massive on chain product, what things are you going to need? Like, what are you going to really hope someone's already built that you can compose with? Um, and well, one thing is an exchange. Um, a lot of products need some sort of exchange. Um, and the really cool thing is that because of sort of the speed and throughput and, and, and cost effectiveness of, of Solana, um, there's a DEX on Serum, uh, which is actually a full exchange. It's not just an AMM. Um, it, it has an order book. It has a matching engine. You can place limit orders at any price in either direction. Um, there is, you know, t price time priority. It just works the way exchanges do. And it's live and you use it today. And, you know, there's there's some UI elements that need to be made better. Um, but, but it feels sort of like an exchange. It's fast. It costs a hundredth of a penny to do a trade. Um, it can process thousands of trades a second. And uh, it has, you know, a hundred order books or something. It has market makers with like scales that are constantly updating. You can place your own limit orders, you know, to make your taker. It's actually a full exchange. Um, and that's super cool. And it's basically the only fully on-chain matching engine and order book based exchange that's, uh, that's sort of uh, high functioning. Um, so, um, so, okay, um, that's, that, that's sort of one piece, but it's not the only piece. Um, what else do people want? Well, borrow lending. It's a really core piece of law financial infrastructure is the ability to lend assets out for yield, the ability to borrow assets to margin trade. Um, and a bunch of people have built out borrow lending protocols on Serum. So there's Oxygen, which launched recently, it's an alpha right now, um, which is a, a fully on-chain full serve prime brokerage model of risk management and pool based like trading and borrow lending. Uh, there's Mango Markets, which has a simpler streamlined uh, margin system built uh, on top of the Serum DEX, just composing with it. Um, what else is there? Well, AMMs. One really cool thing you do on Serum is what Radium did. So Radium is an AMM like Uniswap. Um, same curve, same, you know, you, 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 you put your, you know, whatever your, your Ethan, your USDC in and you provide in that, that same way. You get fees when people trade on it. Um, but the really cool thing about it is that it's not a standalone application. It's composing with the DEX. So it, the way that it provides to takers is it sends maker orders on a Serum DEX. And the really awesome thing there is that means that it doesn't just get order flow from the people who randomly happen to go to its website to trade on it. Anyone who trades on the Serum DEX from anywhere will be able to trade against radium and that that's the whole point of a matching engine right is that like you can have someone providing liquidity on it and someone else who has no idea about that first person go and take that liquidity and trade with them without having to directly match each other up um so that's super cool and it means that radium just has the access to you know potentially make or rebates from all the, the flow from anyone using serum anywhere not just radium specific order flow um so that's something else which is live. Um, and, uh, you know, what else is there? Uh, one super cool thing, which I think is launching soon, is um, is a media network, say, streaming um, a platform 
it's a, a decentralized, it's basically sort of like, uh, you know, you can think of it as like a sort of streaming platform, but on chain, like BitTorrent, but on chain, um, and allows people to coordinate passing content back and forth in, in sort of a trustless way. Um, I, and it's sort of like obviously a lot of applications that that, that could that could empower. Um, uh, you can look at Bonfita, which is basically building something which composes with a lot of the big protocols in Serum, and build sort of a, a, you know a, a GUI that uh, people can access all of them from, um, and and integrate them with each other. Um, there are a bunch of wallets being built out there, other random tooling, um, and there's a, a bunch more on the roadmap. And 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 really the goal is build out all of these products such that if you know visa or twitter or someone like that came tomorrow i was like i want to build my thing but on chain you'd be like great build on serum and already most of the sort of the, the the core things you need are there you can just compose with them you don't need to rebuild them all you need to do is think about your product and your gui and your positioning and your structure um and so one thing that'd be really excited if someone built with was a fully general encrypted on-chain messaging system and social network system where you could just basically specify exactly which people had access to to decrypt um what you wrote and so it could be anything from just dming back and forth to tweeting to the world or anything in between and it could act as the backbone for everything from twitter to gchat to facebook to you know whatever other social networking you wanted to use all on chain and any application could build it in any application could trivially tap into the existing communication networks you could even have like on you know type things into your chat that would cause trades to happen if you wanted because it, it's all happening on chain um so, so that's sort of another thing that i'd be excited for um but then what's the end game here so okay so you have a, a scalable blockchain which could theoretically support a billion users and you have these core applications which are like used in many different products What's the value accretion? In the end, the final step of this is then actually taking a version of a product that has mass appeal and mass use and putting it on chain using the Salon blockchain and using these fundamental primitives built out on Serum. And so, you know, if you want to then launch on chain Twitter, you could just do it and it would just work. And and all you'd have to think about is, is the, the user interface and and you know economics and things like that um i uh, and you know one example of this is maps.me uh has 100 million plus downloads and is going to be composing with oxygen and the serum decks and other things on serum to offer trading investment yield and cross-border remittances uh to all its users uh so anyway that's uh that's sort of where serum comes from and hopefully where it's going to go